warnings. Did I scare you? I was trying to scare you. All right. So warnings. When you are using a linear regression model, you have to be careful because sometimes there's going to be things that are hidden. Sometimes there's going to be times when you shouldn't use it. So let's look at this for example. What we have is that we have time of day versus the air temperature outside. So the linear regression model above is the straight line. And what we want to look at is what's the expected temperature around 1500 hours? And is it actually accurate? So if we look at this, we're going to check out that line. Boop. And we're going to go over to temperature. And what that line tells us, or that linear regression tells us, is that the expected temperature about 1500 hours is 65 degrees. Here's the issue with that is if you actually look at the data in the scatter plot, the expected temperature is actually 75 degrees. Why did this work? Well, the reason it didn't work is because you're trying to put a square peg in a round hole. What I mean by that is you're trying to fit a straight line to something that's not straight. So the big summary of the big warning here is do not use linear regression on nonlinear data. All right, the next big thing is don't confuse correlation with causation. So all we can do is note trends. We have to be careful about implying causation. So finding causation is easier to claim when we do a controlled experiment and then we take on our own evaluation. From observational studies that can take years and countless studies to do, can we actually find a relationship and say that one causes the other? So for example, we all heard that smoking causes lung cancer, but they had performed literally thousands and thousands of observational experiments, or um, I'm sorry, observational studies to say that. Also, there's a lot of things that have really um, strong correlation, but it doesn't mean that one causes the other. So for example, um, the temperature in our oceans has increased it drastically over the last 150 years, as has education levels. So does that mean that the more books somebody's reading, the more the ocean heats up? No, they're both just causes from modern living, but one doesn't cause the other. They're just highly correlated because of a um, confounding variable. Also, we have to be careful of outliers. So what do outliers do? Well, outliers, AKA influential points, is that they're going to pull on our regression line. So remember our regression line is kind of a people pleaser and it's like, man, I wanna to try to get as close to as many points as possible. So it's gonna skew it and it's gonna skew it so much it's gonna pull it away from its other friends. So here's an example. Here we have hours studied versus percentage earned in a class. Now, usually the less you study, the lower your grade, the more you study, the higher your grade. So if we look at this, we would expect a trend like so. However, we have somebody who only studied never and still got like a 98 in the class. Now, what that person's going to do is remember that line's going to be like, hey, we're friends, come here and it's going to pull our regression line up towards that person. Similarly, we might have somebody who studied a ton and still didn't do as well as they wanted to in the course, and that's going to pull our line down. Now, if we look at the R squared and the R value of this, they're going to be really low, and that's because our line's being pulled away from the other one, so of course a low percentage of our points are going to be close to the line. However, if we take those points, the influential points, and we remove them, we get a line that passes through a lot more of our points. Also, what we can see is that it makes our R squared way better. That means a greater proportion of our points are actually close to the line, which means our R value is gonna be better. So if you see influential points in your graph, what should you do? Well, here's the first thing. You should never, ever, 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 ever throw out outliers without noting them first. So we would 
include both graphs. Note that an outlier or two has been removed and then reevaluate the relationship, making sure to note the removal of data. So remember, it's unethical to remove outliers without saying something first, because then you might be accused of picky cherry, cherry picking data. All right, the last thing that you have to be aware of, which is something that people do a lot, is don't extrapolate outside your data's range. So what extrapolation means is it means that you make an educated guess based on what you have, and you try to say something about something that you don't have. So what we have here is that we have the time of day versus the temperature. If we look at this uh, scatter plot, the line fits our data pretty beautifully. Our R squared is really high. It's at 98.5%. Now what we're going to do is that we're going to use the approximate linear regression model, which is this line right here. And that line is going to be y equals 44.5 plus 0.02x. And we want to use this to estimate the temperature at 2300 hours, which, by the way, if you don't know military time, that's totally cool. That's about 11 o'clock at night. So if we use this and we plug it into our formula, so if we take that and we plug it into our formula, we're going to have y equals 44.5 plus 0 0.02 times 2300. And that's going to give us 90.5 degrees. So here's why that's fishy and why I don't like it. So for those of you who don't know, military time at 1600 hours, that means it's going to be four o'clock. Now, at four o'clock in the afternoon, typically, depending on what hemisphere you're in, it's going to be the hottest part of the day. So if it's four o'clock, do you really think it's going to get up to 90 degrees at 11 o'clock? No, it should have started to cool, cool down after that. So what we've done is that we have caused the grave error of extrapolation. Now here's what extrapolation does, is as time moves forward, we're assuming that this trend is gonna continue. That means that we think it's gonna continue on in a straight line. Okay, now the reason extrapolation is bad is because we might have a changing trend. So a changing trend means that maybe something happens after this. So maybe at four o'clock, instead of the temperature continuing to increase, maybe it decreases. I don't know, maybe the temperature increases, but at a higher rate than we expected, or maybe the temperature just mellows out. Either way, we're assuming that it's gonna stay on track like it was. So another example of doing some terrible extrapolation is if you assume that somebody continues to grow their entire life. So people typically stop growing when they're like 20, 21. So if you keep using that model and you try to measure somebody in their 40s, you're going to, one, estimate that they should be super, super tall, and two, make them feel bad because they're not. So you might be like, hey, you should be like at least 10 feet by now, but you're only, I don't know, five foot eight. So key thing is that you cannot extrapolate outside of your data's range. So if you want to try to make an estimated guess using your linear formula, keep it to what you know. So only try to estimate values between the values that you have. Don't try to go further up or further below the values that you've observed.